<laughs> All right, this hangout on air is live. Hello, everybody. Uh, Hello. Welcome to Learning Circles Hangout on Air. I'm Brent Schlenker. I am the CLO of Litmus.com. And I am here again today with uh, my friends Craig and Enzo. How's it going, guys? Good. Yeah, yeah I'm not the CLO at Litmus. I'm a learning yeah, strategist now at SAP. Yeah, I'm the CLO at, at at my home, but right now, right now I'm sitting at ADL. So outstanding. And today we've got a we've got a couple of guests today uh, with us. We're we're going to be talking about some uh, fun uh, fun topics. Uh, talk about the conversations in learning and development. Um, and with us today, we have, and oh my gosh, am I going to uh, forget? We have Alex and we have James with us. <laughs> Speaking so, of our, our, our two guest panelists for today. So um, why don't you guys both, uh, how about we do this? Why don't you give us a quick introduction of uh, yourselves and, uh, and we'll start there. Ladies first. Me? Alex, that's yeah. you. Okay. <laughs> I forgot for a second. Yeah, my name's Alex Watson. Um, I work for a business called Squish Media, which consists of me, myself, and I at this I at this particular this particular this particular consultant. Um, and yeah, I'm here just to be part of the conversation and um, be part of the solution. Awesome. Yeah. So, hey, tell us where you're located. I'm located in London in a place called Harrow, which is, um, if you've heard of Wembley, Wembley Stadium, where they do all the FA Cup finals and stuff like that, it's literally about a few miles from there. Awesome. Thanks awesome. for joining yeah, us, by the way. This is great. Way, this is great. Mm. No problem. And James? And James? And, and, and I'm James Kingsley. I'm James Kingsley. And, and, uh, uh, terrible echo. <laughs> yeah, somebody, yeah, somebody's going to have to turn, turn off or mute their, their microphone. I don't want to say it's Alex. <laughs> is it me? All right, hold on. My microphone is muted. My microphone's okay. muted. Okay, good. Okay, good. Perfect. 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 It's not muted because we can hear you say it's muted. <laughs> muted. There we go. Muted now, yeah. So uh, my name is James Kingsley, and uh, I've been doing e-learning for a long time now. Uh, Articulate Superhero, uh, have the e-learn enhanced website, and uh, review my e-learning.com. And uh, I love mucking around with e-learning and code and combining the two and the latest uh, web technologies and just seeing what I can break and what I can make. Sweet. Outstanding. You're, you said you're an articulate superhero, not just a hero, but a superhero. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it was their articulate MVP program, their most valuable player program, whatever. And then when they converted over to calling them heroes, then the folks that were MVPs were made superheroes. So I don't get a cape or anything with it, but uh, I do get the moniker. And uh, I'm supposed to be spending a lot of time in the firms answering questions, but honestly, I'm uh, kind of lame. I feel really bad about myself now, because I, I, I don't think I'm even a concerned citizen uh, in the articulate community. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used, to, I used to work, do a lot of stuff in, in uh, articulate products, but I, uh, I've since branched out more. I started with Captivate. And then moved to uh, articulate, but now I'm I'm pretty much uh, tool agnostic. If you nice. So. Is that even is that even possible? Actually, no. Let's not talk about that. Let's not do that. <laughs> let's hear yeah. what I was going to say. Too much of a time. Another time. All right, Look well, at Joe Gantt or Joe Ganchi, however the Americans say it. <laughs> My American. The, yeah, uh, let's jump. Go. Let's jump right into the meat of this conversation. Let's talk about. Um, Let's, let's talk about conversations like the one we're having here. Like um, we have this conversation every other week. We um, there are Twitter chats uh, that talk about L and D on a regular basis. There are other Google Hangouts. There's conferences. There's conversations happening everywhere around what it is that we do. And I'm I'll be 
uh, blunt and honest and say that um, I, I felt very comforted when I heard uh, Alex <laughs> mention in her tweet that the L&D conversation is, is uh, at times can get to be a little redundant. Uh, and I guess if you've been in the industry a while, and so, um, you know, and so I thought, wow, let's talk about that a little bit. What can we do differently, right? Like, how can we continue to carry the conversation of what it is we do, but start moving it forward a little bit? Um, and so that was why I invited Alex here, and she's already um, uh, started filling us in on uh, what got her to that point. But let me let me just ask Alex to to kind of restate that for everybody else that's watching and um, uh, tell us a little bit about, um, uh, you know, what, what got her to that point. I know she's not alone. I know everybody else has kind of experienced it. You, you know, you can only talk about so many different conversations in our industry so many times. And, um, you know, after a while when you've heard it once or twice, you know, it does get kind of old. And uh, so then what do we do? So, anyways, Alex, what do you, what do you think? What what brought you to this point? She's on mute. Oh yeah, gotta unmute her. Actually, Enzo, I think you muted her. So, uh, there's no option. To I can um, I can unmute oh. myself. I've just I've just done it. Yeah. yeah um, thanks for um, inviting me along, Brent. Um, um, I used to work for a corporation and have worked in learning and de development. Used to be called training. Um, but learning and development for about 14 years now. I'm also a semi-professional singer and songwriter. <clears throat> and in March of last year, I left um, a corporate organization. And um, in July, I started working for myself. And what I noticed um, was, obviously, in working for myself, I had a lot more pressures on me in terms of running a business and all the other additional things that come alongside it. And, and this left me less time to connect, connect into the networks as much as I possibly did before. But what I have noticed is that when I do plug into specifically L&D networks, a lot of the conversations haven't moved on that much um, from a few years ago when I was much more engaged. I mean, I'm, I've always been engaged and I'm continually engaged, but it's the... Um, it's, I've kind of pulled away because the conversation doesn't seem to to me to have um, developed that much, and the things that people are talking about um, that they're doing or that they're that they're embarking on seem to me to be things that we were talking about two three years ago. So I just don't seem to have the motivation to sometimes involve myself, um, but at the same time I do have a lot of respect for what we do what we're trying to achieve and how difficult it is because I I was in an organization and that's one of the reasons why I'm not there now because I there, were, there was lots of challenges and I think when I think about those challenges we don't discuss them enough because it's those challenges which I found um, the challenges I experienced in corporations were the things that drove me to become a better L&D practitioner and um, the things that I um, have seen since or that I that I notice on the networks is that the conversation is a bit stagnant. It's like a it's like a stagnant pond sometimes, and I'm just not down with that. You know, I've, it's, I, it's, I, it seems I I hear you saying that that's it, we need to get a little bit more practical, right? What are some of the practical things we need to be doing as opposed to the theoretical and and you know that kind of stuff that we tend to get bogged down in all the time. I, I wish think, we had um I wish we had uh, show titles because I think stagnant pond. Would be it. <laughs> yeah, it would be a good one. Somebody from our I'm first book. Of my next book, actually. Uh, yeah. Stagnant Pond of L and D. Um, as, a, as, as a songwriter, I come up with these little vignettes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Great addition to our show here, or if we can call this a show. Yeah, let's do that. Let's uh, yeah, Al Alex, can you do a theme song for us? I, I, I can. I can definitely try. <laughs> we don't, we don't, the first, the first lyric is going to have to be right, standing like pond for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I and, and not to, because um, I could go on that vein for a little while, but um, one, I think you should give yourself sort of a break too, Alex. I mean, you are kind of embarking on a, you know, on on your own business as opposed to being employed by 
um, by another corporation. So that's going to take up a lot of your time, right? Yeah. Um, but I think there, I think there might, and I'll offer this, and I'm sure Brent and Enzo and James have other opinions on this. But I think there are probably two things that are kind of making you see it this way. One, you're not really wrong. Um, it is sort of stagnant. <laughs> Um, I think we're we're getting. I think L and D is doing that thing. L and D and HR are actually doing that thing. We're getting closer and closer to a precipice by half every time. So the shuffling gets smaller and smaller uh, before we get to the precipice of change. Uh, and then people have to commit to learning or, or redefining what it is to be in our industry. I was having a conversation about this last night. Um, the other thing is that we have a lot more people in our industry now than I think we did. Well, maybe that's not true. I feel like we have a lot more people in our industry now than we did in the past. And I think a lot of the things that we we have talked about in the past, um, we oftentimes have to rehash and point people back to old conversations and have them with them again. I moderate the e-learning subreddit on, on Reddit, and or I'm one of the moderators, rather. And we've been going through a little bit right now where we're trying to figure out, like, well, should we you know, do a bit more, crack down a bit more on moderation and kind of keep, keep the content fresher? But we're having a difficult time with that because a lot of the conversations that are coming up around, you know, products or, you know, or techniques or, you know, what do I do? I'm coming out of academia. I'd like to become an instructional designer. Exactly what does that mean? Those conversations keep having to happen. So um, the last thing I'll say, and then I'll, I'll probably shut up for another 20 minutes, is that, um, yeah, I promise, uh, the now, is that, um, you know, we're, there's a, we're getting to a point where we're going to have to redefine what it means to be. Um, someone who actually does e-learning, or someone who does, um, or is a trainer, or you know, does knowledge management, and I think that's a big deal. Yeah. So I have a comment or two, uh, at least. Uh, one positive, and it's it's exactly it goes along with what you said there. I took some notes here as, as we're talking. Um, we do. I, I I've been called a, uh, cynical before. Uh, when I uh, mentioned to one of our experts that we all know in our field here, uh, at a conference I said, uh, he asked me, did you learn anything new? Uh, and my approach was, yeah, yes, but a lot of it was the same. Uh, because it was. I felt like after a, a while of attending events and all of that, and that was years ago, but uh, in participating and presenting and all that, I felt like including myself, we were presenting about the same things over and over again. But there is, you know, I started looking at it as at a, on a positive side, where we have so many people that are relatively new or new to the field that they do need the stuff that we've been talking about for years and years and years, right? Um, we need to have those topics that we've been talking about for years and years and years under different lenses as we acquire more experience as we go as individuals, right? So I think what needs to happen, and I'm speaking to myself too, is 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 a, a mind shift of, yeah, you know, the, we are still talking about the same stuff that is foundational, and but now, uh, since I've been in the industry for so long, I should see myself as a contributor, a contributor to the industry, and, and give back to the community um, my perspective on those models and and techniques and tools, whatever it is that we're talking about and trends, uh, and 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 help people understand what's out there for them, help people, help people know what's out there for them, and and give back to it. Now, not as, as somebody who goes in to consume what's happening at those events, conferences, etc., online events like this, but helping people see different perspectives on, on what is out there. Th does that make sense? So it's, it's, it's in a personal journey as well as you go from more uh, going in to see what's there to actually going in to share what's there, to bring your perspective to it. And maybe it will help us see uh, it as less repetitive. And how do we, so how do we define that? I, I think that that might be part of the issue, right? I mean, a lot of it is uh, finding, right, um, building your own network and knowing who and where everybody pretty much is in their own personal journey, right? Um, yeah. So we want to be able to help all of the new folks with all of the basics, and then there's everyone that's kind of in the middle working practical and they want a lot of pragmatic, very 
uh, you know, talk about the realities of their corporate job or their last client if they're consulting and whatnot. And then you've got the real high end, the futurists, the thinkers, the people that are really driving it. I've always kind of divided, you know, our conversations up sort of into those three categories just to simplify it for myself. Yeah. Does, does that sound about right to you guys, or are there that, more? That does. That does. Although, I, you know, I'm thinking about Alex's points, and yeah, I mean, actually, I, let me, that division, Brent, sounds right. But I kind of want to. I'm going to hand this back to Alex in a second, just to kind of ask, within those categories, or within the meet, like you know, the people in the middle. And then the the high level stuff, like what kind of conversations are you looking to see happen that aren't happening? Uh, yeah, um, I I think I put a few of them on Twitter the other day for for Brent. Um, I can't remember them totally off the top of my head, but I can go back into my timeline. But th um, for me, for example, um, I suppose I've always learned very much through as we all do through experience, through my the things that happened to me. And I think my background and my journey into corporations in, in for number one has sometimes placed me as an outsider anyway. You know, I've always been a musician, so I've always come at things from a different angle. I've never kind of been fit into a, a corporate box. So you find yourself doing things differently anyway sometimes, or some of the things that are... Um, kind of lauded as innovative or creative, I kind of go, huh, I was, I was already doing that, but nobody yeah. asked me. Um, so so me, so so me, yeah, I, I think that's a beautiful commentary, right? I, I've got to say, and I don't mean to interrupt you, except just to add this little <laughs> point, is to, it, the, the people that I have really connected with the most over the years, um, are just like yourself, have oh. all come into this crazy world of L&D with, with some other sort of creative endeavor from some other industry, and they look at the things we talk about and what we're doing, and they're like, what the hell are these people talking about? It's very strange, right? And it, you're, So you're not alone, let me just put it that way, and say that it doesn't matter what other industries people come from. They, they come into the L&D conversation with their skills, their creativity, and they're like, you people are talking about what my industry has been doing for the last 50 years like it's something brand new and then and we tend to and we tend to overthink too just the other day I was talking to a friend who uh, has uh, who's launching a new product and he needs a lot of help uh, coming up with a learning strategy and all that uh, first thing I'm like because they do a lot of instructor led training whenever there's a new customer and do some instructor led training and they're a small company they can't scale that so I'm like, have you guys done a task analysis, blah, 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 all that kind of, you know, the standard stuff that actually does help, right, the, the analysis that do help. Um, and he hasn't, but he wants to do it. And I'm like, so once you do that, figure out the tasks that are essential, the tasks that will be repeatedly done and all that, the rest you do documentation for now and focus on those that are really done on a daily basis. Have your people record short videos and stuff like that that your customers can look at. And even if you do instructor led training, they come in prepared for a shorter session instead of a whole week of training and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, I love this. But if only I could convince my people to pick up the microphone uh, because they think they sound bad on the mic. I'm like, are you kidding me? So the only thing that's keeping him from implementing a learning strategy is the fact that people think that they sound bad on the mic. And, you know, I, I think we see that a lot uh, with our learning industries, that people are afraid to put things out there because they don't think it's good enough because we have a lot of people out there talking about how amazing learning has to be every time, how the quality has to be worth millions of dollars for every single little bit of content that you put out there. Yeah. I mean, this is this right. is an interesting point. Sorry, can I, can I jump in there? Because... Um, uh -huh. Because one of the things I found when I was trying to um, persuade people within my organization um, to, to follow certain paths or to potentially do certain things, I, I'm a great believer in um, leading from the front. So if I had the discussion or I sent some information and that wasn't working, I'd literally create, create something that was pertinent for them, doesn't have to be much, and de demonstrate it. So I, I, I always try to find practical ways so that person would, would be in no doubt of the benefit. So, but I understand also the, the reticence that people have in exposure 
in exposing themselves. Yes, I'm a singer, so I so I'm used to putting myself out there, but I wasn't always confident to do that. And um, also, I am a generation X, which people don't always realize. But it, what it means is that I really do, even though I, I, I blog, I tweet, everything I've done online has been for me to learn. It's all, it's all been um, part of a learning process. Um, because I'm not necessarily comfortable with putting myself out there either. Yes, I'm a singer, but I'm very introspective. So I understand. So my, my way of getting people like that alongside is, is it's interpersonal, you know, but people are scared. People are scared of exposure, you know, mm -hmm. and they're, they're scared of the privacy aspects of putting themselves out there. And it is a big thing, but I think that that can be... Um, overcome and I over, I overcame it with a lot of people that you wouldn't expect to you know want to get in front of the camera but I think if you meet people where they're comfortable you know talking about their subject and you you let them know how um, beneficial their what's inside of them is you can usually chivvy them along I, mean, I hope I'm not using too many um, UK centric terms but I chivvy think, them along with yeah, we kind of, you know, to, to to kind of becoming becoming more comfortable and um, you know risking a bit of exposure to a certain extent. But you're you're right. There is a there is a big problem with exposure and privacy that I don't think we always we always um, appreciate. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. And and sometimes it's exactly and that's exactly what I suggested to my friend is let's record some videos that are not super high quality just so they can see that it is okay. If they want to pick up the mic, record their screen, do a little bit of editing in Camtasia, whatever it is, and get it out there, and you make it better later. I also find that doing stuff badly as well. So <laughs> I don't mean that, but what I'm saying is, if you even a lot of the stuff I've put online, it's not it's not highest quality, you yeah. know. But my my point was, did it do the job that it needed to do? You know, quality is absolutely important, de depending on what you're what you're doing it for. But sometimes having the, the highest gloss is not necessary to me. If I've got an engaging speaker and I've managed to capture them saying something awesome, you know, if it's a bit if it's a bit fuzzy, it doesn't matter. And if you if you want to hold me to that, look at some of the stuff I've <laughs> recorded, especially in my early days. I was I'm not a professional, you know, but I had to I had to literally put these skills together to because I was so driven to kind of break out of the box. Mm -hmm. So um, it's nice to have quality. It's always good to, um, you know, dot your I's and cross your T's, but it's not, it's not the be-all and end-all. Exactly. Yeah, I think, <clears throat> I've, I think I've blogged about this recently, or in the past at least, talking about the iterative development process, right, okay. and how... Uh, we as a we as an industry as a group of designers developers whatnot we need the corporate the pace of corporate and business in general tends to demand that we do what we do faster right and that um, you know we we can't take six weeks eight weeks ten weeks to do all of the crazy you know the the analysis and stuff like that we've got to get faster at what we do and we've got to produce and um, you know one of the successes I've had and, and seen others have is you know doing exactly what Enzo was saying and, and Alex your, your examples are perfect as well too where you just you just gotta do it you just you know the first thing you get out the shoot is maybe just uh, you know, a video of a subject matter expert teaching a class, and then you take that video and then you uh, edit it down a little bit so that it's shorter, and then you pull out some chunks and say, hey, let's re-edit this into its own standalone piece that's pre-worked before the class. Okay, great. And then, you know, and then you just you just slowly improve it and make it better and better and better as you go. And and I think you're right. To, to your point, Alex, I don't, I don't think a lot of designers that have been doing this for a really long time are comfortable with that because they've been so accustomed yeah, yeah. to we've got to design this course to be exactly all of the things we want it to be right out the chute when we go you know it can't just be a little bit of it it's got to be the whole darn thing and it's got to be good you know or else it's not going to work so this idea of hey let's just you know, let's expose our design and development process all the way up until that point. They, you know, in the past we just jumped there, 
Now we need to just expose that process and all the development that went into getting there. And I think that's okay. I think um, I think it's a cultural shift. I think our the you know the next generation of employees aren't going to care because they're used to seeing stuff that's that's quick and dirty and and changing and and having to consume small chunks of information over time. Uh, you know, and watching it change and watching it grow and be something different and, and themselves being a part of the improvement, right? This is something that we all forget about is that, um, you know, the, the learner actually has a big part in what it is that we do and I think sometimes we leave them out of the picture and, you know, why not just put something out there, let them give us feedback on it, then improve upon it, you know, and then you get that nice symbiotic relationship, right, where you're all engaged and you're all working towards building, you know, something that's going to be really, really good and is going to have all of the elements that you want. So this is a conversation that I actually want to see, um, have, see happen a bit more and maybe it's a matter of fear that we're not seeing it happen more. Um, what Brent was just talking about, the back and forth between, you know, uh, the state the learners are in and what they're and anticipating where they're going to be going, I think that that is um, that's something that we don't maybe talk about enough in um, our circles. We talk about, you know, I don't know, getting better at their tools. We talk about, you know, trying to create, you know, getting a seat at the table, you know, with our with our um, with the powers that be or whatever. But we don't talk about the kind of like knowledge management relationship that we have. Uh, with our with our learners and you know trying to stay as intimate with them as possible it's a great situation if you have a core of learners within an organization that you can grow to know and I don't mean personally I mean get a sense of their profile and I don't know if we talk enough about that and I think maybe to Alex's point like this is a good way for people within organizations who haven't who are not who are timid about uh, both creating things outside of the box that actually meet the performance needs within an organization, but on the other side are really timid about actually going out into the L&D community, like the community that we were talking about, and actually sharing their knowledge and experiences. I remember a couple years ago, no one was sharing e-learning online. Like, you just couldn't find it. Like, there literally, ha there, I think a website called e-learning examples literally had to be created so that people would actually have a place to put stuff up. Um, you know, this is before the days that we articulate, um, you know, basically, um, Superheroes, MVPs, and I don't know. Um, and I think now uh, people are, are more willing, and actually there's a new generation of instructional designer and, and learning developers that's actually more willing to put things out there um, and actually show what they're working on and kind of show behind the curtain. But um, yeah, that's the conversation I'd like to see more of, like the actual yeah. building and then serving those needs as a result of, of knowledge of that core. I think for years now, uh, you know, the tradition is we only talk about our successes. Uh, we Academically, we talk about how gaming is awesome because students can fail forward and all that kind of stuff, but the instructional designers cannot fail forward. They have to get it perfect from the beginning, you know? <laughs> but I, I've been seeing more of that lately uh, where I go to conferences and I see people talking about get it out there. Uh, you. You know, if you failed in your design, do some analysis, go back, evaluate it, and change it a little bit later, or whatever it is. Use it as a learning opportunity. And I, yeah. you know, I've seen a few experts doing that more often when I go. And that is the mindset that I'm trying to have for myself. I'm I'm obsessive with perfection, which is never attainable. Uh, and I'm not saying I achieve perfection, <laughs> but I'm obsessed with getting there. So. Uh, but I'm, I've been trying to let it go, let it go a little bit more lately with, uh, you know, let's, let's get this out there and, 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 and get feedback and see, uh, you know, we put the work out there. If it doesn't work out exactly as we learned something, I'm using it as a learning opportunity for myself as well, not just for the learners. And I have that freedom here in my team, and I understand not that many people do have that freedom. Yeah. It's something to, Jim, to try Jim to... Jim here and tell us a little bit about what's going on with the Articulate community. Well, what I, what I wanted to mention there is he just mentioned the conferences, and I think going back to what Alex originally uh, had brought up about how uh, we've become a bit of an echo chamber and we're all talking about the same stuff uh, back and forth and for years, I think part of that is that conference system. You know, it's a big commitment to go to a conference, to prepare for a conference, and they can only have so many things there, so they pick the most popular topics. And we've already mentioned that there's a lot of uh, new people coming in, so they need to learn the same stuff that we already learned. And then when you go to 
the rare occasion that there is a conference topic that you know you're excited about or you haven't heard about, when you go there, it's limited to an hour, and they can only cover the very basics of it. I think if if we could move some of that those to an online thing, kind of like this, where there was you know a whole day dedicated to a Google Hangout to learn how to use Angular JS and eLearning, oh, man. you know something like that. It's it's All not right. the same commitment to get on a plane and fly somewhere and listen to a thing for one hour. So I gotta, yeah, James, I gotta I gotta tell you. So um, a colleague of mine, um, David Lacroix. Um, he is my writing with partner. In fact, he's listening right. He's watching us right now, so that's not creepy. But um, we switched that from uh, doing a writing work where we'll write things and then meet on a Google Hangout every week to talk about what we've written. We've now switched that to a learning uh, whip. Which that sounds even worse, actually. But a learning <laughs> whip where where we are um, where you know we've actually decided all right we're going to work on these things to learn about this subject. We have an entire list of things that we're going to learn over the next few weeks. And I, I really like that idea. Um, it would be interesting to have what you just talked about, James, have like a, all right, we're going to learn AngularJS together. Like, how do we structure that as learning designers? How do we actually get that together? Um, yeah. And how do we how do we make sure he's, he's, he's talking to me? As Let's well. organize it, James. Let's do it. Let yeah. you so so how, how would we do that? I mean, that's, 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 the funny thing is, is we're all good at e-learning. But we're not creating a new learning course on yeah. new topics in English. See, is, isn't it, so isn't that actually called a, isn't that thing called a, um, uh, isn't, isn't that by default like what we call a, a MOOC or a massively open online course, like basically trying to get a bunch of people kind of like herding cats along to learn something together. We need, we need like a buzzword counter or something for this because he's <laughs> yeah. really uh, in a room approach and uh, <laughs> just... And by the way, Ryan, going to your point, we do a lot of iterative stuff here. The biggest challenge for us is educating our clients because when you send them something that's half done, oh, they've got all kinds of comments about all the stuff that you haven't done yet, and you just want them to focus on on the part that you have worked on. You know, tell me if, if is this functional, but instead they're telling you it's the wrong shade of blue. You know, but yeah. I suppose my, I, you guys all seem to. I'm not sure so, so much sure about you, Brent, but. Um, e-learning designers and I'm not um, strictly an e-learning designer I have I do design e-learning I can use you know articulate storyline captivate Camtasia to a you know to a, a level to, to put things together but I don't class myself as um you know an expert designer so that, and that's probably one of the reasons why there's not the massive quality but not just that what I found from the, the position I was in um, maybe five years ago, um, four or five years ago, five years ago, um, six years ago, was that um, I, I was in a position where I had little resource, I had little people around me that understood um, the wider implications. They didn't see what was coming. So I was this person that was in a position, and I and I, I made a lot of things happen from that from that vantage point using the things that I told you about, which is learning the tools myself, creating things, showing people, and being very bold and showing the CEO, you know, t telling whoever I thought would be able to um, make changes, because those are the people that you need. So I was very, very braggadocious in a way, um, and that, that, that didn't always win me in, in friends and influence people, but sometimes it did. But I, I knew that I was I was doing the right thing um, in terms of what I was trying to achieve. Perhaps what I learned was sometimes you can go about things slightly differently potentially. But but in terms of in terms of um, what that taught me about not being so precious about the the quality, and I don't want anybody to think that I don't think quality is important because I I believe quality absolutely is important. But to me, the quality comes from the content. And then everything around that should be um, dressing. You know, it's like <coughs> yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. So let me let me I'm let me try to clarify just a little bit of what I mean when I talk about that from like an, an iterative process, right? I I there's um and, and this might be a good dividing point as far as the work that we all do, right? So there's um there's when there when we have consultants and when we have certain types of training events courses whatnot whether they're whether they're online events 
as in just an e-learning that somebody takes, they still have to carve out time. So I've got this saying that I say a lot, and I'm trying to beat this drum quite a bit. Training is an event. Learning is a process. Technology supports them both. And performance is our ultimate goal that we're trying to impact and improve, right? Really, at the end of the day, that's really all we do, and it is that simple, right? So when we take training events, as a consultant, I totally understand what James is saying. He's got to create a product, right? Now we're talking about designing and creating a product that we have to give to a customer that wants that product polished. They want the quality. They want it wrapped up in a nice bow. And you're going to you're going to go through your design process with that client to get to that end state. And now you've got this packaged thing that goes to there. It's a hard sell going to your client to say, okay, client, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have this iterative process that I think is so cool. And what we're going to do is we're going to deliver something that's kind of half-baked and we're going to deliver it to all your people. And then once we get the feedback, we're going to put it back in the oven and bake it a little bit more. And then we're going to put it out again. And then we're going to do that again. And we're going to do that about five or six times before we're done. Now, would that be a bad thing to do? No. But is somebody going to actually buy that? I don't yeah. know. I mean, maybe that's a different type of product. But in general, over the years, we look at courses as products. We, we productize what it is we do as learning and development folks. The tools that have been created are for that purpose, right? All of the early yeah. days of tools, author air, everything like, else. Like hammers, was, listen, hammers and nails, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was let's create let's package this thing and let's sell it. So now we've got so gonna, and we've got a, a shelf full talk, of packages. I'm not gonna talk about XAPI this time. <laughs> you just I, did. Pro I promised myself before I got on but the call. You just did. I would not talk about it. Yeah. If you, if, if you, if you, if come you come on, come on. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, jump in, Alex. I was, was going to say, given what you've just said, I think that um, it resonated with something I thought about earlier when we were speaking earlier, which is, and about the conference thing, which is I think that's what we're suffering from in terms of this stagnancy. That, that, that what we're suffering from is um, that we've packaged everything, mm. you know? So we first of all, we packaged the learning, then we packaged the conference, now we've packaged the, packaged the conversation around all those things. And right. I think that's why when I jump into it, I'm like, man, oh, man. Um, and a lot of the times, um, you, you know, life is never in a nice box as we like it, like in a nice e-learning package. And I think sometimes we people um, want the, the answers to be like that. They want the solutions to be like that. They want a blog which shows them here, here. And we, we pretend that we can provide that for them. And I think that's what I don't like. I think yeah. we're not yeah, being yeah, we're not being true. honest. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Exactly. There you go. That, 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 what, a, what a perfect statement, Alex. Thank you. That's, we package it's, everything. And you know what? I, I That's something I've been thinking about, too. And I posted even, uh, uh, and I won't mention exactly which model right now, but we package everything so much that we try to sell the same old thing with a new package <laughs> and sell exactly. that to people because now we're a experts in the package that we ourselves created except that thing is the same thing that was before. So I can come up with the Enzo model for instructional design but it's still Addy, named something else uh, or maybe I'm skipping a phase or something, calling a phase something else. It's still Addy, it's still the same essential steps that you're analyzing the need, you are, you're designing, you're developing, you're implementing, you're evaluating it, it's just name something else. So I don't want to throw away, I don't want to throw away like years of, of uh, acquired knowledge about you know, how, to, how to teach people to do things, but to Enzo's point, I think maybe we need to step back and, and yeah, man, I, I really agree with Alex's statement about like the packaging of everything, like the fact that, you know, what people know about e-learning is that you have, like, a package that you put into an LMS and that serves it out. Like, that gives people a sense that we've produced a thing. But what, yeah. if we take, what if we start talking about learning experiences and actually kind of designing experiences? In which right. Well, let me, let me just yeah, – let me, let me jump in right there because this is the point I was trying to make, right? <clears throat> That we do this pack lot many years to get comfortable with this. Yeah. But this is but the terminology to be structured. The fact that when we're talking about training as an event, 
it's okay. Let's package that. But let's not kid ourselves and say that we can package learning because learning is what happens on the learner's side, right? Learners learn. And learning is a process, often a very long-term process, and it's often very messy and it's very ugly. And different people <laughs> approach learning things in very different ways. And as we design training, we assume that we're going to design this package that's going to provide the exact learning results for everybody on the end. And we, we, we try to bring learning and training and, 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 and we sometimes use the terms synonymously and you can't. We, need to, we, can, we have to separate that work that we do and say that learning is the responsibility of the learner. All we can do is create environments, experiences, content that can support that learner's learning process and be a part of it. So how do we change the conversation of what we're doing without, how do we change this conversation without um, uh, alienating the people within our, our organizations? Because at the same time, we do, I agree, we do need to change the way that we talk about what we do and actually change what we do even, but how do we do that in a way that doesn't, you know, have us out in the street? We just keep doing what we're doing. Just within our industry, we just talk. We just need to be talking about it more clearly, right? I mean, it's always in corporate America what we do to the C level and to the business people of the world. It's just training. You will always hear them say that. They, you know, shut up, Brent. It's just training. Just make some training, right? You're, you're, and none of them care. They, they don't. They don't really care. They know that training has to be created. It has to be done. They know that training is an event. It's a thing. It's a package. And they don't care. You, we, can, we can fight the good fight, as people say, and try to change the entire business community's perception of what it is that we do. But it, what we do is we package so, the training and the so training. Not, let's not talk about training anymore. I mean, again, it's easy for me to say I, I work within a research and development uh, arm of the DoD, actually. So I'm, I'm, you know, we're, we're, we're thinking more about learning technology and its effects on... Right. We, 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 tried, we tried to go that route, though, Craig, a long time ago. We tried to get rid of that term training and that it wasn't like training. I remember statements like this, right? We used to say, training is what you do to your dogs, right? You know, <laughs> dogs get trained. You know, people people learn and dogs get trained. And, you know, we, you know, I, I've gone through that whole phase as well. But this is the reality. This is what Alex is experiencing. This is what James experiences. This so, is what everybody that's not working in a lab experiences. In the real world, in the corporate space, there is a need and for training. And they're going to call it training. So we need to stop fighting that. And we need to say training is a thing. It exists in the business small, community. But it's, what, it's, what? More, it's a smaller part of everything that we do. I feel like I've cut Enzo off like twice now. Like I, I feel like I've talked Jump directly. In, yeah. Oh, no, I, I think uh, you guys are exactly right. Uh, tra training is still part of learning, but it's not the end of learning. And um, I try to do that, uh, apply that view, even the, the smallest, let's talk about a practical way of doing that, right? In the smallest level, uh, say I'm doing a big strategy training for, for the company. Uh, well, we're talking about strategy. We have, some, we have videos, whatever it is, quizzes, etc. about the strategy for that company. But we can also bring in some other elements that are not so much training but are... Uh, for example, discussions like why not instead of just having them consume the training, we also have them add to the conversation by creating a forum where they can share how that strategy can be applied, uh, you know, uh, practically. How do you do that in your team? With your team, how do you, uh, if you're a leader, increase trust? within your team. What are some things you can do? So that now they're, they're, they're doing training, but they're also doing learning by reflecting on how they do it and sharing with others who might not even be thinking about doing it that way. So in a practical, it's a simple little example, silly one, but uh, you're, you're doing the training package, but you're also doing something else. What if in that forum, we, we can then later on, at, if we do gather some good ideas, share that 
with the stakeholders that are trying to drive that strategy and tell them, look at what people are saying about it. Have you thought about this? Maybe you can give them personal feedback and make them feel important about what they're doing because what they're doing is cool. Their suggest suggestion is valid, you know? So, yeah, it, I think you guys are exactly right. Uh, w there are still places for packages, but there's also places where that, you know, the, it just doesn't work because... Yeah, I think, I think uh, the package is changing and I, I, I think the training package is still connected. It's still, you're right, it, Craig is right, it's a smaller piece of the big learning puzzle, right, in everything that we do and um, and it's, it's something that's still, it's something that still it exists, right? It's something that we still create, it's something that we design and we make really good but there are these other pieces that we need to make a part of it and we support that and we need to be engaged in making those things happen so if we're talking about you know the forums or conversations or study groups or um, you know reflective writing on something or whatever however somebody supports their learning process right mm -hmm. we need to support that but it all does still sort of revolve around the ultimate uh, you know, there's this package, and there's got to be an end game of some sort. Somebody wants to get some little checkbox that says, yeah. "I've learned X, Y, Z to this level or to that level." And it, it's sad, and it sucks. And I, I know Craig rolls his eyes at me, but but we're we're getting yeah we're getting pretty close to the end of our time. But maybe this would be a good segue. Maybe we can maybe we can teach. One more thing. One more thing. One more thing. Okay. I sound like Steve Jobs now. Uh, but you know, there, <laughs> there's one more thing. I think Craig asked the question, "How do we do this?" I think we are doing this. There are other people out there uh, on Twitter, events, communities for uh, learning professionals, and all doing this, which is bringing the conversation about other forms of learning, what learning really means out there. And I mean, if you think about it, a few years ago, um, until people like, for example, Jay Cross packaged informal learning into a book and, and things like that. Uh, we actually used to not talk about informal learning that much in, uh, in, in corporate learning at least, uh, you know, corporate America, but now we, we are. I mean, we're seeing more and more informal learning, uh, whether it is structured discussions Sorry, that we guys. provide and creeping into that? what training is. Okay. You know, but because we are talking about these kinds of things, we we're going places. We're we're starting hangouts. We're posting Twitter, and by we I mean people in the industry. Uh, and we are starting those conversations, and and things are. I think things are changing. You know, before training was training, and then the conversation about training not being an event started getting more mainstream. Informal learning started getting more more mainstream. <laughs> Keep talking, and then it's the conversation that gets us somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a good. I think it's a good point, and I, I think we're uh, we're at a good place to wrap it up. And I think there's a lot more that we can talk about on this topic. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, we're getting close to our time. So James, why don't you jump in one last time, get us your last thoughts on this topic before we head off? Uh, I. <clears throat> I'm going to agree with everything we said. Right. Uh, the conversation is stagnant, and there are some folks out there looking for new ways to uh, enlighten the conversation and bring more into it. And so you just have to find those, and we each have to create our, a new avenue of conversation to so we have more conversation. And so where where can we find you, James? Uh, eLearningEnhance.com is where we do course development work, and if you are fed up with your review process, check out ReviewMyElearning.com. Outstanding. And I, I'm going to try to just fill some time. Hopefully we can get Alex back uh, and so that uh, she can close out. But uh, Enzo, give us your, uh, where are you at? Where can people find more about you? EnzoSilva.com. Simple. That's too easy. That's, easy. That's too easy. You're going to yeah, have to right. extend yeah. it a little bit. Yeah, man. Uh, I'll extend a little bit. Uh, you can also uh, Google my name. You'll probably find some rants of mine there. You know, I'm, I'm constantly ranting about the state of things. <laughs> what? So. And so you know. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah, that's why it's why we all get along so well, right? Just what? Just like taking turns ranting? Yes, yes I agree. Yeah, that's so great. That's a great to be known for. <laughs> Essentially, that's what this entire thing is. In fact, just us taking turns ranting. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Learning yeah. Circles, man. What have I missed? Yeah, we're no. well. We're actually just wrapping it up. So I yeah. wanted to. We oh. were we were kind of stalling for time to uh, so that we could get oh, you okay. back. Sorry. No, no, that's okay. We're just um, just. Got, I, I was getting my delivery. My delivery I of fresh organic vegetables. Oh, there were vegetables. Oh, nice. Oh, lovely. Organic veg, yeah, freshly right. grown from. Wow, nice. So um, but um. I, I missed your rant, but um, that's I can't, that's what kind of what I do rant, <laughs> and that's why I felt bad when I said that comment, and I and I was so grateful to get some kind of positive feedback because sometimes I say things, and then I think, oh, maybe I'm being a bit mean, but um, yeah, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a good ranter. <laughs> no, it's good. I, I think we all are. I think yeah. I think I think this particular I think this last hour has shown that we're all very skilled at the rant, so it's good. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I know. I know you were wrapping it up, but I had one thing to say before before the doorbell rang. I wanted to pick up on a point, and I, and okay. I had to, I, can I do it? Can I do yeah, it? Yeah. Go for it. No. It was it, yep. it was literally. I kind of had a feeling that in our industry. Um, We've still got a lot of people with um, very traditional views. You know, they've been in it for a long time. They've been in organisations for a long time, and it's kind of like some people get it and some people don't. Some people you'll see something about informal learning and you got it immediately. You were like, right, and so you immediately started to fold it in. And with other people, it's just not in a part of their mindset. And I'm, I'm not saying that they can't be taught because we're, we're we're learning professionals, so we always believe we can if persuade and influence. But I do think um, I do think that's what the industry is suffering from as well because there's a lot of people. Obviously, there's more people entering the informal learning conversation because technology is so pervasive now. So they can they literally can't escape from it, you know. So they're having to come out and learn about stuff, and 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 you know we have to be there to support them. But I do think a lot of it is to do with a mindset, and I think that is the mindset that has to change. That's that's what we have to try and actually change. Is change people's comfort levels with uncertainty, with that kind of stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. a, a lot of what we do is definitely change management, without a doubt. It's uh, yeah. is having to deal with uh, helping people get a little bit more comfortable with doing things differently, for sure. So, sure. so Alex, tell us a little bit more about uh, where people can find you, what your Twitter handle yeah. is, and all that good stuff. I I did put some of it on the chat, so it will be there. My Twitter is Songbird. Um, I'm gonna type it in there now. Songbird. Yeah, you made it so easy with that. Uh, those numbers in there. <laughs> oh, what was that? I know. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not sure if that shows up on the video stream or not when it gets recorded. But for those people that are just watching, it's uh, at Songbird. So it's S zero N G B num the number one R D. Oh, D. I think it's really simple. You know, it's like zero. But yeah, it it, it always annoys people. It always. <laughs> it's but unique. Songbird, it's wasn't good. A, songbird wasn't available. The word itself wasn't available. So I had to, you know, I had to do something, and that's kind of what I I call myself a lot of the time. It's so, good. Um, no, no, it's, yeah. it's great. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Good deal, Craig. I think you're the last one. We have skipped you. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Actually, I just want to end frame. I think James, your Twitter handle is on enter frame, right? That is correct. Okay, cool. I just posted that in the chat. So, oh, there we go. Perfect. So I, all right. I'm gonna. If you're drinking right now, I'm gonna mention it one more time. I uh, am. Uh, I guess I'm the community manager for ADL, uh, Advanced Distributed Learning. I spent all my time thinking about the uh, experience API slash XAPI. I'm leading an XAPI design cohort. We're in the middle of week four of 14, so we've got like 15 teams of people uh, working to um, experiment with the Experience API, and currently the Experience API and Augmented Reality, Experience API and the Internet of Things, um, a lot of work with building record stores, um, some people getting ready to uh, to work on a few, or work on a, um, a new hire orientation uh, set up using sensors, and um, I'm going to learn more about that later today. I'm really excited about everything. Um, you can find me at Oxala75, so that's O-X-A-L-A-7-5. 
uh, on Twitter, and um, otherwise, I'll be right here. Awesome. I, I, need, I need to get my name as a as a um, as a domain, like Craig Wiggins. It's probably good. yeah, for sure. All right. Well, I'm gonna jump off because I have an 11:30 that I'm three minutes late for. So yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm off. That. Thank uh, you guys. All right. Thank you. Thanks for like so Nice to meet you yeah. and see you in person. And Thanks you, for joining friend. us. Join us again. Yeah, absolutely. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye.